everyone good evening uh, welcome to my talk today we will be uh, discussing about um, testing kubernetes on a bespoke cloud and using kube test tube for that so before we get started um, i i'll give a brief introduction about myself uh, my name is priyanka sagu i work at suza as a kubernetes integration engineer and I've also been part of the upstream kubernetes project for a while now um currently i hold uh, the technical lead position for sig contrivex before uh, we get started uh, with the main portion of the talk which is talking about kube test 2 uh, and how to expand it uh, i want to first discuss a bit about what kubernetes end to end testing actually looks like so um in the upstream kubernetes project we use github to maintain our source code so the source code of entire kubernetes project and its sub projects sits inside uh, various diff different Git github repositories um we also receive various uh, contributions code contributions from the community and every time we receive code changes into the kubernetes code base we need to test them uh, to to understand whether those um code changes are uh, good or are not uh, um are not bringing any breaking changes etc etc so how we do that is whenever somebody creates a pr to add any code changes we check out uh, the state of the said repo uh, with the changes that are coming from the pr and um, from that state we create fresh kubernetes binaries out of them and using those binaries we create a test kubernetes cluster so we set up our new test environment using uh, kubernetes binaries that we just built which are also including the new code changes now uh, inside the this newly built up newly spun up kubernetes cluster we run uh, various few uh, various test cases uh, uh, respective to the code changes that we are getting from the pr and we keep collecting the logs and the results of those test cases and finally uh, that when the test uh, is concluded when uh, or the tests are finished we what we get at at the end of uh, the entire test duration is the results of the test which we can uh, then use to um, come to a decision whether the code changes that are coming from the pr are um, good to go ahead or are they breaking and require any further changes and so on so for uh, uh help us so for helping us to do all this uh, entire uh, testing uh, what we use is a tool called kube test so let's try to understand what is kube test kube test um, is a framework um, a testing framework maintained by the upstream kubernetes uh, sig testing uh, this is a framework for deploying kubernetes clusters and then execute end to end tests inside them so how it does that is by uh, the cluster configuration so uh, it, it kube test to allows us to build the source code uh, build the binaries from the source code uh, which is bringing new code changes and then use those binaries to spin up or deploy test environments in this case kubernetes clusters um, as well as then perform end to end testing inside that and keep collecting logs during the duration of those end to end tests and finally when we are um, finished with our um, test suites uh, we need to dispose of the test environment so kube test to helps there as well so we um, have we do all these three three things um, uh, uh, across four different steps of kube test to which is first one is build where we uh, where kube test to helps us to build the binaries from the source code um then we have the up step uh, up phase where kube test to uses the newly built uh, binaries and executables to spin up a new test environment a kubernetes cluster and then uh, using various kube test to uh, plugins we can perform end to end testing with, uh, different scenarios of end to end testing uh, and uh, meanwhile uh, kube test to also keeps collecting logs and then finally when we are finished with um, our testing requirements it helps us to spin up uh, spin down or decommission our test environment 
So that's how the entire workflow of kubetest2 looks like from build up, test, and down. Let's see what's the architecture of kubetest2. kubetest2 um, is split into three different uh, independent executables. The first uh, one is kubetest2 itself, which is the main binary. It's a standalone uh, bare executable. On its own, um, it does not do anything. Like here, if we see, we have installed kubetest2, for example. Uh, what it is giving us is um, it's trying to look for deployers and testers. So deployers and testers are different uh, uh, executables that will help us to deploy test environments and then perform tests on them using testers. So here in this case, uh, on its own, kubetest2 does not come up with any deployers and testers. Then we have to plug in deployers. So uh, kubetest2 follows a plugin paradigm, plugin mechanism. And how it does is it, it looks for binaries in a, in a standardized format. Uh, named in a standardized format. So for example, here we have a binary called kubetest2 hyphen deployer1 uh, or any kubetest2 hyphen deployer name. So uh, if kubetest2 finds a binary like this in, it, in its path, it would detect it as one of the deployers available to it. Similarly, if we have any binaries with a standardized format, formatted name called uh, kubetest2 hyphen tester hyphen tester1, um, it will start detecting that as another tester available to itself. So um, these three binaries work together for us to, fin uh, to give us this entire cluster life cycle that we require for our end-to-end uh, -end testing requirements. Uh, we can add multiple deployers. For example, here we have deployer one, deployer two, deployer three available to kubetest2. Similarly, testers, tester one, tester two, and tester three. And um, how to run a kubetest2 um, test, our entire um, life cycle. So uh, we start by writing the kubetest2 command itself. And in front of that, we have, we mention the name of the deployer followed by the up, down flags. To, uh, to deploy and bring it down at the end uh, of the cycle um, of Kubernetes cluster. And then we give it a test flag followed by the name of the tester and the test arguments to uh, tell kubetest what kind of test tester it has to use to perform the end-to-end -end testing as well as what test it has to perform. So for example, here we have uh, a test from the upstream Kubernetes project, which is using a GKE deployer to spin up a new GKE cluster in Google Cloud Platform. Uh, and uh, for uh, it is performing conformance tests. So here we have given it Ginkgo as a tester, followed by the test arg arguments giving uh, asking it to go ahead and look for conformance tests. With that, Let's see um, how the upstream Kubernetes project integrates kubetest2 with Prow. So as a user, um, we interact with the upstream Kubernetes project using um, its various um, org and repos for different sub project. Um, we create PRs and issues. And if um, on one of those PRs, for example, um, we write a comment like slash test all to start um, performing tests on the code changes that we are um, we are proposing through our PRs. Um, that's where another component called Prow comes in the picture. Prow is a CI CD system, a CI CD tool built by the upstream Kubernetes project uh, for their testing requirements as well as the all other automation requirements. So there is a, uh, uh, in Prow, uh, the Prow infrastructure looks like we have a Prow service cluster as well as Prow build cluster. We can understand that with uh, with Kubernetes uh, itself. Like in Kubernetes, we have um, ma master nodes and worker nodes, and in master node, we, all the control plane uh, stuff sits in sits inside the master node as well as where we schedule our workload is the worker nodes. So similarly in Prow, um, there is a service cluster, uh, which is a Kubernetes cluster itself. And inside that service cluster, all the Prow machinery sits. And there is a build cluster where all the jobs, all the CI CD jobs are scheduled in. So in this case, whenever we write a comment like slash test all, uh, the Prow service cluster listens to those events that are generated through those uh, GitHub comments and respond to them by 
um, scheduling Prahu jobs or Prahu CI/CD jobs on uh, one of the build clusters. And since a build cluster is essentially a Kubernetes cluster, so whenever we say we are scheduling a CI/CD job, uh, what it does is it creates a pod for that job. Um, but in this case, when we are saying we are creating pod for end-to-end -end tests, uh, those pods are created using a container image called kubekin Kitui, which eventually ships the kube test to binary to us. So that's how uh, the Kubernetes project interacts with kube test two for its end-to-end -end testing requirement. Now, what are the primary features of kube test two? Why kube test two is um, good? Um, so the first one is consistent cluster lifecycle. So what kube test two does for us is it has codified this entire uh, cluster life cycle for us um, in in its four different phases from the build up and test and down uh, phases of kube test two. So it's now easy for us to um, uh, cover the entire life cycle of a cluster for our test requirements. Um, the second one is decoupled implementation of deployers and plug and play testers. So Q Kubernetes um, comes in different flavors uh, uh, for different um, operating system, for different distributions or for different cloud platforms. And if not all, we would like to test at least some of those use cases. So um, kubetest 2 allows us to deploy cluster for some of those flavors of Kubernetes, as well as um, it allows us to expand uh, kube test to itself by writing different custom deployers um, for our other use cases that are not coming in free. So um, as well as it does the same for testers as well. So we can also write our different implementations of testers. Um, reproducible CI and local testing experience. So not only kube, kube test two allows us to uh, cover this entire test life cycle um, in, in a CI CD pipeline format, for example, in Prow, but it also allows us to uh, perform those kind of testing locally as well. All we have to do is just go ahead and install kube test binaries and whatever deployer and tester we require, and we can perform those tests locally as well. So uh, kube test 2 provides us both uh, CI and local reproducible testing experience. Finally, we um, have support for Boscos. So kube test 2 um, uh, provides support for Boscos through Prow. Uh, Boscos is a plugin that comes with Prow CI CD system um, for lease management, for cloud resources lease management. So for example, we have to run uh, an end-to-end -end test which require cloud resources. So we do not have to worry about bringing our own cloud resources every time we want to run tests. What kube test 2 will do is, um, if it is running inside a Prao CI/CD system, it will try to ask Boscos whenever it requires, for example, a GCP project for running a pro uh, test. Um, it will ask Boscos, give me a GCP project for the duration of the test run. And then uh, kube test 2 will go ahead and create a cluster inside that GCP project, run the test, and then decommission it at the end of the test duration, uh, test run and uh, releases, release it back to Boscos. Now we looked at the primary features, main benefits of Bos uh, Kube test 2, but why do we require bespoke deployer? Uh, we just touched that Kube test 2 um, allows us to expand uh, itself by implementing different deployers and testers. The requirement is because kube test 2 only supports GCP, GKE, and kind deployers in tree. And since Kubernetes comes in different flavors, there is always a requirement to test Kubernetes uh, on various different other platforms. So we can do that by uh, writing our own bespoke deployers, since um, kube test 2 allows us to do that. And we can write them and have them available as out of tree implementations. So uh, let's try to do that. Uh, we have a demo here where we'll try talking about how to write a custom deployer for kubetest 2 and in this particular case for Azure Cloud, um, Azure Kubernetes Services. So we'll try to see how to write a deployer which will create AKS clusters for us. So in order to um, create a new deployer uh, uh, or ex extend kubetest 2, with a new deployer, all we need to do is to uh, essentially implement this deployer interface. So um, 
this deployer interface has a few functions which we see here um, and if we are able to implement these functions uh, that means we have a new de deployer available uh, so let's see at the functions um, let's look at the first one which is up um, up would contain the logic for bringing up a new cluster so in this case we are talking about aks our up method would contain some logic that would tell how to uh, spin up a new aks cluster and whatever is required to do that similarly down will do the opposite uh, it will contain the logic to tear down that um, aks cluster in our case uh, is up is a function that would check whenever we are deploying a new cluster whether that is deployed successfully or not uh, we'll get that signal from is up method and then we have dumb cluster logs since one of the requirements for kube test two is not only to spin up a cluster and spin, uh, decommission um, it at the end of the uh, test duration but we also want to keep collecting the logs that are uh, getting generated throughout the test run so dumb cluster logs uh, help us to do that uh, and will contain the logic for that and finally we have the build method which is an optional uh, method because uh, we already we actually get binaries uh from the upstream project as well but if in this case for example we want to uh, test code changes coming from pr so every time we need fresh binaries so build method would contain the logic on how to build binaries that are required for example in this case to spin up a new aks cluster uh, so let's start uh, first we will clone the kube test 2 uh, project from kubernetes 6 uh, pro uh, GitHub pro uh, organization. Um, once we have the repo clone locally, we'll CD inside that. And the first thing we'll do is we'll run a target, make target called make install all. And that will install uh, the kube test two and all the available deployers and testers uh, for us in our local path. So if we see when we clone the uh, kube test two project, what we get from in the root of the project is um, are, are these few folders here. So uh, we see there are few four folders here named uh, kubetest2 hyphen GCE, GK, kind, and no op. Uh, all these are of the format kubetest2 hyphen deployer. So these four folders correspond to four different implementations of deployers in this case. And similarly, we have four more folders down uh, called kubetest2 hyphen tester hyphen cluster loader to exec repo and node. And these correspond to four different tester implementations. So uh, when we run make install all target, uh, what we get is we get all those four deployers and testers available into, uh, to us in our path. Uh, and kubetest to start detecting them. Now, for us to create a new uh, deployer for AKS, we'll need to follow the same pattern here. We'll start by creating a new directory uh, of the format kubetest2 hyphen deployer. And uh, since we are creating a deployer for AKS, let's call it AKS. So, um, so inside that um, directory, we'll try to create a folder structure, something like this. Uh, we'll have um, folder called deployer, uh, which will contain a file called deployer.go. And deployer.go will be the place where we will implement our deployer interface. Then we'll have another folder called script, where we'll, in this particular, uh, for the sake of demo, we'll uh, use two bash scripts to spin up a new AKS cluster as well as to decommission it. So uh, we, we will keep our, those two bash scripts in our script folder, and we'll later use them uh, to implement our up and down methods in deployer.go. And finally, we'll have the main.go file here, which will become the entry point for, our, uh, for the invocation of our new deployer. So let's look at the files. First, we have the scripts uh, slash cube up.sh file. Um, what it does, it, it looks for the AZ, uh, the Azure Cloud uh, binary as well as the jq json query binary in the path as well as it looks for whether these uh, few environment variables are set in the system host machine or not so in this case az vm size and cube config it also looks for uh, environment variable for az resource group and az cluster name to check whether um, uh, what resource group what would be the name of the new resource group it will create and what would be the name of the new cluster it will create um, so if these environment variables are set, 
uh, then it will go and check whether in actually in our Azure cloud uh, subscription, do we really have a re resource group by that na name already available? And if not, it will go ahead and create one. And once we have the resource group available to us, it will go ahead and create a new cluster inside that. And once um, we have the cluster up and running, it will also go ahead and fetch the cube config uh, of this newly spun up cluster and save it locally for us on our machine. So that's what kubeup.sh does. kubedown.sh does exactly opposite of kubeup.sh. Uh, it also looks for JQ and AZ binaries, um, so those tools uh, in our system, as well as those um, variables. And once uh, everything is there, it goes ahead and uh, delete the resource group, as well as followed by the Kubernetes cluster. Finally, we have. Uh, the deployer.go file, which actually contains the uh, implementation of our deployer interface. So this is a big file. It contains a lot of plumbing and a lot of utility functions. So for the purpose of this demo, we'll just look at the implementation of our major uh, four or five methods that we require to implement our deployer interface. But if you want to understand uh, or look at the entire code uh, that is available uh, in the link at the link in the footer. So here we see it's a deployer package. Among other modules, we are importing one of the modules here called package slash types. Uh, we have a few uh, variables here. Uh, for example, we have a random postfix, which is used to create a ra random uh, resource group name and random cluster name uh, for every uh, new run of the uh, kube test to uh, sorry, every new run of our end-to-end -end test using this AKS deployer. So every time we run a new test, uh, we would want to create a new cluster and a new resource group so that no two concurrent test runs um, conflict with each other. So that's where our random postfix in, is coming into the picture. Uh, we have a constant name name i've just set to aks here so this is what we'll use to uh, in our main.go file to actually uh, invocate our new uh, deployer with the name aks finally uh, not finally we have our next function here called build n which um, uh, is a which is just a utility function here that um, that seeds these environment variables into our machine, uh, AZ location, AZ resource group, cluster name, et cetera, which are required by our bash scripts. Um, then here we have the deployer struct. So here um, we have a deployer struct, which takes all these fields called uh, common options, logs there, overwrite logs there, repo root, config path, et cetera, that is required to define a new deployer. And then we use this struct here to initiate one of, uh, initiate a new deployer for us by passing values to the struct fields above. And so what this new function does is it returns a new deployer in, uh, uh, instance to us, as well as also um, uh, returns a bind flag function, which is a helper to actually create and add uh, bind a flag set to our newly initiated deployer, which means uh, whenever uh, I will write kube test to AKS hyphen hyphen help, I would be able to see a lot of uh, flags available to my new deployer, and that is done by this bind flags helper function. Then we have the actual methods that uh, uh, we need to define for this uh, newly initiated deployer. So here first we have the is up method. Um, is up method uh, inside that we are using our build in, in uh, method to make all those environment variables available into our system and then followed by that all we are doing here is uh, checking uh, whether running a kubectl command called kubectl get nodes uh, using the kube config path that we will get from one of the environment variables that are set up above uh, and if it gives us a list of nodes, that means there is a cluster running. Um, so it's a naive assumption, but it's good enough for our demo. Then we have our, our next function, next method called dumb cluster logs, which is one of the requirements from kube test tool uh, to keep collecting logs from the test run uh, throughout the duration. So we, what we do here in this uh, method is we create a log directory. And then one uh, after creating that log directory, we run another kubectl command called kubectl cluster info dump, uh, followed by the kube config. 
uh, which will just dump the entire cluster information into for us in our in, in our log directory above. Followed by that, we have another function called up. Here again, we are making all the environment variables available to us. Um, when we are spinning up a new cluster and and uh, doing rest of the stuff there, we need to collect the logs here as well. So for that entire duration, uh, since we require logs, we do that by this defer block. So what this does is as soon as some any part calls up, it will invoke and it will start collecting logs till the up function concludes it, whatever it needs to do, which in this case, it has to run the cube up.sh bash script. Uh, which will go ahead and create the resource group followed by the cluster and set the cube config uh, inside our local machine. It will also go ahead and use our is up function to check whether whatever cluster that cubeup.sh script created is working um, properly or has been provisioned successfully or not. Then we have the down function, which is opposite to up. It also uh, in, uh, runs a bash script, but in this case, it go ahead and run the cube down dot sh script. And then finally, we have uh, the cube config function, uh, which um, which just looks for an environment variable called cube config if there, and returns back a path to that cube config. And then the last file uh, for our new deployer is main.go. This is the entry point. So here we uh, import our cube test to AKS deployer, which we just um, created in the previous file, deployer.go. We import that here. And then using that, we uh, we create a new deployer here, giving it the deployer.name, which we had set to AKS, and passing it the new deployer we created in deployer.go. So with all those files, now what we have here in at the root of our kubetest2 project is a new folder called kubetest2-aks, which contains all these files for us. And if we go ahead now uh, and run rerun uh, the make install old target, it will now in, uh, also install our new AKS deployer. Uh, and kubetest2 would be able to detect that as one of the available deployers to itself. Um, we can start using that AKS deployer by uh, a command, something like kubetest to AKS, giving it flags for up and down. And when we do does that, uh, when we do that, um, what we see is a uh, kubetest to creates a new run ID or uh, instance for our uh, test run. Um, we can see it has create, created a new folder with that run ID and it will keep collecting all the logs there. We, uh, we also see all those environment variables are set there and using those environment variables, it is creating a Azure uh, resource group in West US2 location, followed by creating a Kubernetes cluster inside that resource group. And once the cluster is up and running, um, it also f is fetching the cube config from the cloud and uh, making it available to us on our local machines. We can also uh, see that uh, kubetest2 has dumped the cluster logs to us in that uh, path uh, underscore run there slash the, in the run ID or the uh, instance ID for this test run, followed by the cluster logs folder slash cluster info.log. And here we can see the entire um, logs of the new newly spun up cluster. So with that, we come to the conclusion of our demo. Um, so it is a note, um, kubetest2 also had a pre predecessor, actually has a predecessor called kubetest because it's still in use in um, certain test scenarios in the upstream project. Uh, but the Kubernetes project is on its path from migrating uh, uh, from using kubetest to kubetest2 now. And that is what it recommends as well because um, kubetest2 is more modular. Um, it uses the plugin paradigm, which we saw by we can go uh, we can go ahead and ex uh, extend kubetest2 by implementing our own deployers and testers. Um, and thus it provides us a simplified code structure. So uh, with that, we are also at the end of our talk. Uh, if, uh, if you want to try, the new uh, kubetest2 AKS deployer that we built as part of our demo. That's a link to that. Um, if you want to just look at kubetest2 itself, um, you can check out 
sigs.ketas.io slash kubetest2. The slides for this uh, talk are available at um, psagu.com slash assets slash that path. And finally, if you want to contact uh, regarding or if you have any queries regarding this presentation or kubetest2 or generally anything related to uh, sig testing, um, go ahead and reach out to folks uh, at slash sig testing um, slash sig ketas in from slack ketas.io or you can uh, ping me at psagu uh, on same slack ketas.io um, that's my email and address uh, thank you again for uh, joining my talk and i open the floor for questions thank you